Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is wildlife veterinarian, Dr. Dan Grove, and Assistant Wildlife Division Chief, Casey Anderson. Today, we're gonna to talk about chronic wasting disease. Dan, what is CWD? Well, chronic wasting disease is one of several uh, prion diseases, and this one specifically affects members of the cervid family. So in our state, that would be white-tailed deer, mule deer, elk, and moose. Okay, what is the difference between CWD and other prion diseases? Um, primarily, CWD is only known to infect cervids at this point in time, whereas there are other diseases like bovine spongiform encephalopathy, which is actually, most people know as mad cow, that one can actually infect people as well as uh, other domestic animals. Okay, how do these prions get in the environment? Uh, basically, the animals can shed them in their saliva, in their urine, and in their feces. Um, and so the longer an animal remains in the environment that's sick, the more prions that are deposited. And once they're in the environment, there's research that's shown that they never actually leave the environment. And some types of soil actually make the disease more infectious once it binds to certain clays and things like that. Casey, how does CWD affect uh, wildlife management of deer? Well, obviously with CWD being permanent on the environment, and then it, it's fatal every time a deer contracts it. And so that there hasn't been anything to show that a deer can not die from CWD, essentially. And so <clears throat> for, for managing the, those herds of deer across North Dakota, for one, we don't, we don't want it to come into the state. Now, we do have it in, in our 3F2 deer hunting rifle unit. Um, and so in those cases, once it becomes in the state, now we have to keep the prevalence low. We have to keep it from spreading into the healthy populations. Um, and because it, it has many ramifications as far as of course, being fatal every time, it's going to affect your, your deer herd by killing some deer off. And so not only do you have the tough winters and, you know, just the fact that it's not easy to maybe live outside in North Dakota, um, you now you have something else stressing the population. And so all these things start to add up and you start to see population declines. Okay, Casey, how does that affect deer hunting or hunting? Well, <clears throat> it depends on sometimes the mood of the hunters, too. Um, CWD has not been shown to transfer into humans, um, but the CDC, Center for Disease Control, doesn't recommend eating a deer that you know is positive. And so you get a subset of hunters who just say, I'm not taking the risk of even hunting in a CWD unit where that impacts us because we need hunters to help us keep those populations from spreading um, to some extent. And so it all depends on sometimes the attitudes of the hunters and you could see a reduction in just people wanting to hunt in that area because of the disease's presence. So we have some special regulations in Unit 3F2 and some of the surrounding units too. Right. Tool, with this disease being permanent and there's no cure for it, essentially, um, it, it poses some, some definite risks, of course, and, and limits the tools you can use to deal with it. Um, so in 3F2, what we've done is we've eliminated uh, the use of bait for hunting. That's one thing that the department has the authority to, to limit as a manner of take. Um, and that's to keep concentrations of deer from artificially concentrating themselves. I mean, they, they do concentrate in the wintertime. Deer are a social animal, but it's the levels and intensities of those con concentrations that you're trying to manage. Um, and then we also keep the tag numbers high in that unit to keep the population from starting to spread. Like, population gets too high for the carrying capacity of the habitat, they're going to start filtering out and looking for other places. And so we want to keep that to a point where we don't want to exterminate the deer, um, but we want to keep the population low to manage the prevalence of the disease so that it doesn't really start to affect and kill off the population at a high level. Um, you know, most times people don't really see these animals die, you know, and so uh, th that's kind of hard when the prevalence is so low it doesn't seem to be such a risk sometimes, but okay. keeping it low is what we want. Okay, Dan, what are the risks to humans? Uh, as Casey mentioned, uh, at this point in time, there's been some studies that have been done, uh, but there's not a good human model when it comes down to it to 100% prove that yes or no, it cannot infect people. But again, the CDC recommends not eating meat from any known infected animal that has prions. So. Okay, and what has the Game and Fish Department uh, done for CWD surveillance? At this point in time, we've been doing CWD surveillance since the late 90s. 
Um, overall, throughout the state, we've sampled over 35,000 animals. Um, we rotate through the state uh, and do about a third of the state every year. We started on that cycle as funding decreased and uh, availability of, of that money decreased. We were able to still continue uh, our surveillance, but we only do about a third of the state each year. So every three years, we get the whole state sampled. Um, each year, we do about two surveillance units. Uh, and since we found uh, CWD and 3F2, we've done surveillance in that unit since 2009, every year. So, and this year, we'll actually be out in the western third of the state. Um, and again, we'll be sampling 3F2. How many confirmed uh, cases do we have in North Dakota? At this point in time, there's been nine confirmed cases of CWD, which, relatively speaking, is a low number. Uh, whenever you compare it to other states recently that have found uh, uh, new cases of CWD, you know, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of animals. And so we've been lucky so far that um, it may sound like a lot of animals, but for us it's, you know, been, been relatively small number of animals. Casey, CWD can also be an elk and moose. Right. So we talk a lot about CWD affecting our deer herds. They're probably the most likely to spread it between themselves faster just because of the sheer numbers of deer we have in the state, but we also have, of course, our, our elk and moose opportunities in this state that a, a lot of hunters take advantage of or would love to take advantage of. Um, and, but CWD can infect these animals as well, and it is also terminal every time they get it. And so we have a limited opportunity that could be infected and even limited more with CWD if this comes in through the state. Okay, Dan, do we do any surveillance on moose or elk? Yep, every year, um, regardless of where we're doing our deer surveillance, we actually take uh, surveillance from all the hunter harvested elk we can get our hands on, as well as all the hunter harvested moose. In addition to that, as well as with deer, we actually do targeted surveillance year round, um, where any sick, dead, or dying deer or moose or elk that might look like they had CWD, we actually get samples out of those animals and test them. Um, over the years, we've probably uh, sampled about 700 elk and probably about three or 400 moose uh, for CWD. And no confirmed cases? No confirmed cases. There's actually been very limited confirmed cases uh, nationwide and including in Canada of uh, it infecting moose, um, but in elk it is actually fairly prevalent in other states. So it is a real concern uh, that if the prion was to actually get into any of our limited populations that those populations would be severely affected. A lot of good information, thank you. There have been some changes to this year's CWD regulations. One of those changes is Montana has been added to the list of states with carcass importation regulations. For a complete list, see the 2018-2019 CWD proclamation, which lists states, Canadian provinces, and other countries that have had free-ranging deer, moose, or elk diagnosed with CWD. Specific parts of importation of harvested elk, white-tailed deer, mule deer, moose, or other cervids from the listed area is restricted. For more information on CWD regulations, go to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For Wildlife Veterinarian Dan Grove and Assistant Wildlife Division Chief Casey Anderson and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.